Hello, thank you for joining me in another midweek meditation for this uh, 3rd of June, 2020. There's a lot going on, and I'm trying to focus in on, on one part of what's weighing heavily, I'm sure, on everyone's heart and mind, which is the uh, disruption of any kind of harmony and unity, especially around our, our different racial heritages and how that must grieve the heart of God. So I want to read a few pieces of scripture, talk about it, pray about it, and maybe even sing a verse or two about it. <clears throat> From the first book of Samuel, which is part of the history of the Old Testament in the 16th chapter, Samuel has been vent, sent to visit Jesse because Saul has failed as, as king. God has sent Samuel the prophet to anoint a new future king of God's people. In the 16th chapter, after uh, Samuel has assured Jesse that he comes in peace, he invited them to a sacrifice. And when Jesse and his sons came, Samuel looked on Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed us before him. This would be the oldest brother. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. From the letter of James in the second chapter, James reminds the believers, if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. From Paul's letter to the Colossians in the third chapter, and I read just a, a snippet of, of wonderful advice from Paul. Paul says, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Lord, we ask your blessing on the reading and hearing of your holy word. We are seeing such bubbling over of resentment, hatred, destruction. Mixed in, and it's hard to discern sometimes where, where what comes from. Mixed in with genuine hurt, genuine differences in our culture, genuine resentments. I've had experiences, even having come from Bangor, Maine, where the only families of color I saw were Air Force, um, and I had a lot to learn when I went out of Maine and went into the Army. Um, and then we say, oh, but people shouldn't react in such destructive anger. What will we do as a church, Pastor? What will we do? I believe our, our job as Christians, and certainly mine as a, a preacher and teacher, are to seek to teach God's way of impartiality. Yes, justice, out of love. Not out of cheap forgiveness, but out of seeking to earn the forgiveness, out of seeking God's higher standard for all our lives, whether we are police officers, 
citizens next door, and church members, but to seek to inspire the kind of love that binds everything together in perfect harmony, as Paul says. Because in God's eyes we are not male or female, Scythian, slave, free, all those other things that Paul listed. We are children of God, all of us. Other parts of Scripture point out you're all born of the same father and mother. God created Adam and Eve, and from them all the peoples of the earth trace their heritage. We are all children of God. I believe as the church we are to seek and model compassionate listening, thoughtful, compassionate speech, not pandering, not offering cheap forgiveness, but seeking to draw together brothers and drive apart through the word of Christ, through the gospel, through harmony with others as best we are able and to model that in our words, our deeds, our electronic clicks on media, in all the different ways that we can show it, to model the gospel of Jesus Christ and call others to it, especially those in positions of responsibility, whether they be elected leaders or appointed with a badge and an oath to serve and protect. Hold all to a higher godly standard, starting with ourselves, each other in the church, the church itself, and to speak out as a voice of compassion and love, harmony and forgiveness, seeking peace for all, not because we can give it, but because it comes from Jesus Christ who told us, I give you my peace. My peace I leave with you, not as the world gives, but my kind of peace. He would have used the word shalom, the peace of heart, mind, relationship with one another, and relationship with God. We need to seek our relationship first with God through Jesus Christ. Use that, as to, use that to inform and strengthen the relationships with one another and call neighbors to know that same relationship and love and to respond to it near and far. I hope you'll join me in that endeavor. Heavenly Father, things are so confusing in the news, we're not sure how to pray, except to pray that your will come to be done, that your will be heard, that your justice, tempered with your mercy and grace, because we need all of them, would prevail in the world and that those in responsibility and leadership, from police officers to elected leaders to judges on the bench, would hear your way, would see others the way you see them, with impartiality, Mercy, grace. Yes, Father, we know that you are the God of accountability too. Tune our hearts and minds that any of the residual latent habits that we have would be purged. Lord, purge them from us. Help us, we pray, that we would not be, certainly not deliberately, but not even in our unknowing or unseeing or unthinking, that we would not be part of what drives people from one another, because in doing so as a church, we might drive them from you. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Heavenly Father. Come, Holy Spirit. Strengthen in us your will, your word, your way. In the name of our, of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. From Psalm 67. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. 
For you, Lord, judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. An old hymn from my youth. Many of you, I think, know because it's in the old Pilgrim hymnal too. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity will one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians. By our love, we will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand, and together we'll spread the word that God is in our land, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Grace love and peace to you in the name of god our father and the lord jesus christ in the strength of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen and amen thank you for joining me